Hi, this is Dave Farina with CosmosSafari.com. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the specs of two of the most sought after DSLRs on the market, the Canon 6D Mark II versus the Canon 5D Mark IV. These are two full frame DSLR cameras that are on the middle and high end of the DSLR market. My guess is that if you've clicked on this video, you probably already own one of these two cameras or you're interested in buying one. All of the camera gear that I will be using in today's video is currently on loan from the Perfect Image Camera Shop in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I want to extend a personal thank you to the Perfect Image Camera for helping to support CosmosSafari.com and the astrophotography community through your collaboration with me on this video. Check for their link in the description below. To get us started today, let's look at the specs of these two cameras that relate to their capabilities as an astrophotography camera. In order to keep the focus on astrophotography, I won't be looking at other features of these cameras related to their capabilities for other types of photography. The most important factor for astrophotography is the sensor. For this section, I've referenced DxO mark tests for both cameras. DxO Mark rates the camera settings through scientific testing in a laboratory setting, producing excellent baseline values for these camera sensors. First up is the Canon 6D Mark II. The 6D Mark II, released in 2017, is a full frame DSLR with 26.2 megapixels and a pixel size of 5.75 micrometers. That makes the 6D Mark II slightly lower megapixels than the Canon 5D Mark IV, released in 2016. The 5D Mark IV is also a full-frame DSLR with 30.4 megapixels and a pixel size of 5.36 micrometers. The first DxO Mark value that is of importance for astrophotography is a rating of the sensor's signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. DxO Mark describes signal to noise ratio as how much noise is present in an image compared to the actual image information or signal. The higher the SNR value, the better the image quality, as detail is not drowned out by noise. In this category, the 5D Mark IV performs slightly better at lower ISO values, while the 6D Mark II performs better at the higher expanded ISO values. The reality of this is that one would never shoot actual images for astrophotography at these extreme ISO values, and as a result, the 5D Mark IV barely squeaks by for the win in the signal-to-noise ratio category. The most important factor for a camera sensor for the purpose of astrophotography is the dynamic range of the sensor. DxO Mark describes the maximum dynamic range as the greatest possible amplitude between the light and dark details of a given sensor that it can record, and is expressed in EVs or exposure values, or f-stops, with each increase of one EV or one stop corresponding to twice the amount of light. In this category, the 5D Mark IV is the clear winner with a 13.6 EVs versus 11.5 EVs over the 6D Mark II at the lowest ISO settings. That's equivalent to over four times the amount of light level difference between these two cameras. This provides the ability for significantly longer exposures of very dim deep sky objects without overexposing the surrounding bright stars. In astrophotography, this capability is paramount. After a quick review of these values, I can say with confidence that at least on paper, the 5D Mark IV sensor is the clear winner for sensor quality in astrophotography between these two cameras. Due to the importance of this category, I award two stars to the 5D Mark IV. ISO range is an important factor when looking at camera gear, 
especially when it comes to the ability to produce clean, low noise, higher ISO levels. The 6D Mark II is capable of an ISO range of 100 to 40,000. The 5D Mark IV, on the other hand, is capable of an ISO range of 100 to 32,000. Both camera ISO levels can be expanded in manual modes to include a lowest ISO of 50 and two higher expanded ISO ranges of 51,200 and 102,400. In nearly all cases, we want to try to keep our ISO levels as low as possible. Although we won't ever shoot at these extreme ISO levels, it is important and helpful for the purpose of framing our deep sky objects, as well as for focusing in very low light conditions. Given that both expanded ISO ranges are equivalent, I will call this a tie. No stars will be awarded. Durability is a very important factor and body materials is an important consideration for astrophotography due to the potential for dropping gear while you're working in the dark. Additionally, weather sealing is important when cameras will be left out for long periods of time, often unattended, and potentially under heavy dew and frost conditions. The Canon 6D Mark II is a prosumer level camera, meaning it does not have the full weather sealing and ruggedness of the more rugged 5D Mark IV. The 6D Mark II is made of aluminum alloy and polycarbonate resin, or plastic, mixed with a glass fiber. The 6D Mark II is only partially weather sealed. The 5D Mark IV, on the other hand, is a professional level camera made of magnesium alloy body covers. The body has weather and dust seals equivalent to any other professional camera on the market. As a result, the 5D Mark IV is my pick when it comes to longevity and ruggedness. I give a star to the 5D Mark IV for durability. Shutter durability is an important factor in a hobby where you're going to be taking a significant number of images of the same object over and over again. The 6D Mark II does not come with a shutter durability rating at all, although the original 6D came with a 100,000 shot rating. While the 5D Mark IV, on the other hand, has a shutter durability rating of 150,000 shots. Keep in mind that this is a number that is only an estimate, similar to how many miles you might expect to have a car run for. It's not an actual rating for your shutter. For this reason, when it comes to durability, the 5D Mark IV is the winner by default. The feeling of losing a night of imaging under clear dark skies for any reason is one of the worst feelings in the world for those of us who are passionate about astrophotography. Losing it due to a memory card failure has to be one of the most frustrating. The Canon 6D Mark II has only one SD card slot, whereas the 5D Mark IV has dual card slots, one compact flash or CF card slot, and one SD card slot. The 5D Mark IV's Dual card slots can be used to provide redundancy for the memory of your imaging run, and therefore provide the peace of mind to know that a corrupted memory card did not just ruin an entire night of imaging at some beautiful dark sky location. It is for this reason that under the memory category, the 5D Mark IV gets my vote. Both cameras have internal intervalometers that permit multiple images to be taken back to back, with a maximum exposure time of 30 seconds. This internal intervalometer setting in the menus is a wonderful way to get started with DSLR astrophotography. However, many times going beyond 30 seconds per subframe exposure may be beneficial, so I recommend purchasing a separate off-camera intervalometer off of Amazon for less than $20. An external intervalometer has a bunch of benefits, including the ability to keep your fingers off the camera. This will make sure that you don't shake the camera while you're operating it. Additionally, an external intervalometer can have an exposure significantly longer than 30 seconds, allowing for more time to collect data from very dim deep sky objects like galaxies and nebulae. I will place some links in the description below. The 6D Mark II comes with a very angle 3.0 inch or 7.7 centimeter touchscreen with a lower resolution of 1.04 megapixels.
The 5D Mark IV comes with a higher resolution 1.62 megapixel display. It's 3.2 inches or 8.1 centimeters, and it's a fixed touchscreen. The 6D Mark II is my choice for screens when it comes to doing astrophotography. Many times when you're trying to do an image of an object directly overhead, it can become cumbersome with a fixed screen setup. You're constantly on your knees and you're trying to look up to operate the camera from the rear facing display. Both cameras are capable of producing a live view display with a 100% coverage area and have the ability to zoom up to 10x zoom. This is extremely helpful when framing and using a star and or batten off mask to focus your lens manually as autofocus will be useless for astrophotography. Both cameras are capable of producing numerous sized RAW files, although I recommend to always shoot in the highest RAW plus large JPEG format. The JPEG images won't be used in post-processing, but are helpful for quick previewing and to quickly share with friends when you're out in the field or on social media. Both cameras use the Canon LP E6 battery, which provides approximately 1100 to 1200 shots on the Canon 6D Mark II while only capable of between 850 and 900 shots on the less efficient 5D Mark IV. As a result, the longer battery life of the Canon 6D Mark II makes it my choice for long imaging sessions, especially on cold nights. My recommendation is that if possible, don't rely on batteries at all. Both cameras are capable of accepting the AC E6 AC to DC adapter which allows you to plug the camera directly into a household power outlet. Although this costs $99 from Canon, you can find some third-party brands for as low as $25. I'll place links in the description to these items. The next category is value. Of course, with a price tag of $2,499 on the day of this video, the 5D Mark IV is over twice the price of the very comparable and very good 6D Mark II coming in at $1,199. So in the value category, the 6D Mark II is clearly the winner. You could buy two Canon 6D Mark IIs for the price of one 5D Mark IV. So as a result, I am awarding two stars to the Canon 6D Mark II for value. So in conclusion, in this breakdown, based only on specs, it appears that the Canon 5D Mark IV should be the clear winner for the astrophotographer when it comes to image quality, durability, and memory. However, the 6D Mark II provides a significant advantage for the astrophotographer with the very angle flip out screen, the long battery life, and for those of you who are budget minded. The reality of this discussion is that none of it really matters. What really matters is how these two cameras operate and how they perform in real world situations. Please join me on my next video when I'll be doing a head-to-head -head astrophotography field test of these two cameras in my own backyard. Thank you so much for watching CosmosSafari.com and please keep looking up. The universe is closer than you think.